Hello and welcome to another part of this Cosworth engine rebuild. Now it's not going to be uh, a major long video, I'm just going to be putting some of the parts back on. So we've got a big carrier here which holds the um, alternator, it holds the um, fan belt tensioner. So we're going to put this on, I'm going to use Loctite on all the bolts. Not a lot but it's going to be there. Five bolts that actually hold it in place. 17 mil. Now that's on, next thing I'm going to do is put on the uh, fan belt tensioner and as you can see, yes, I've gone mad with the paint, so I've painted everything, because why not? It's just a bolt that goes on the back, very simple, again, we some Loctite on here. Now. thing I'm going to put on is the water pump and like I said it's so important you make sure you get the area really clean because I'm not using sealer I'm using a gasket so it has to be really clean really flat so you know you're not going to come into any problems then we need to line this up so we know we've got it the right way that lead is there and now there's three different bolts for this Two 13s and a 17. I'm not going to tighten any of them fully. So we've got them all kind of squeezed. Now, that's on. One water pump on. And a good thing to do, it's like when you do anything, is just twist it just to make sure nothing's grabbing, nothing's doing, nothing it shouldn't do. Now we can put the pulley on. And I painted everything the exactly the same way as I painted the engine, so there was no point in me showing you it. Done exactly the same way. I even painted the washers and the head of the bolts. Yeah, 13 mils. Oh, that's the wrong one. Now, so the next thing I'm going to put on is the alternator. Now, because it's obviously off the car, it does make life a lot easier to put everything on now. And this is very simply. Just a couple of bolts. I say simply. There's one. And number two. Now I know what most of you are thinking. What's the point of painting all that? Well. As any car guy will tell you, me painting these, I have added at least 50 horsepower. At least 50. So, it's good for everything. At least 50 horsepower. Maybe even a bit more. But definitely 50. So, that's basically all, all I have to do is tighten up two bolts, two 13mm bolts. And then we have that. Next thing I want to do is the distributor. Now, depending on your car, distributors are more or less the same, but they just have a few differences. Now on this particular one, I don't know if the camera's gonna show that up. We have a line cut into, I don't know if the camera's gonna show that, a little line cut into the body. That actually is to line up the, um, the rotary arm. But before we do that, we have to get the engine in the proper place before we can put this in. So we basically have to time it. 
Now, again, depending on your engine, you've got different timing marks. On this particular car, so on Cosworth, this is your timing for your distributor here, and this is obviously my engine, or the pistons, you could say. So, what we need to do, again, I don't know if the camera's going to show this, but inside here, we have a little kind of like triangle mark, and that has to line up with a little mark here, which is about, you could say, say two o'clock. It just depends on your car. It's not vitally important we get this 100% because I've still got to put the time belt on and time this anyway, but we need to get it more or less right. And what we also need to do is we need to get the engine timing right. So when it's on number one piston, it is firing number one and it's not firing something else. Because what you can actually do with a, with a distributor, you, you can be 90 degrees out. And what I mean by that is, if I turn this as if I was turning the engine, if you can see, just turn it again because that's the right time. So as we can see, what we need to do, again, the camera might not show up, there's a little cutout on the, the main pulley wheel and it lines up with another mark on the engine. But what we need to do is, on the actual pulley wheel there's these four little points and those four little points are actually for the bottom crank sensor. So what I need to do is I need to line up the first point with the line on the engine. We know we're definitely right because obviously our cylinder, our pistons, completely up to the top. Now. I know we can see this now because the engine's off, but once you've got that lined up, you know you're right anyway. So once we've got this lined up, we know we're more or less right to put the distributor in. Now, like I said, even at this point, now the distributor has just fell all the way in, which is great. But as you can see, I can still turn this distributor. Now I can turn this distributor completely all the way around. So this will affect the time. We still need to get this part correct for everything to work so we also have the little locking pin for it for the locking clip so i'm just gonna put that on there now so what i need to do is i need to put this little screw on first just like that and then put this on. and this is what actually keeps it locked down for us so we know we're in the right position so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get this down again now we have gone down, we're not fully down, but we've gone down. So we are fully down. Now, what I need to do is, I just want to double check that everything is in the middle of the marks. Make sure the piston hasn't moved, so that, that doesn't really move. That's, that's going to, you're going to struggle to move this, but this, as you can see, can move very easy. And as it's moving, you can see it's moving the actual rotary arm. Now, what also this does, this also spins the, the pump around. So you need to make sure you're completely connected, which we do feel good. Anyway, what I can do is I can put this back to the timing mark. And what I need to do is, I need to make sure the little mark I showed you is directly in the middle of this rotary arm, which is a about there. So as you can see I had to move that. Not a big deal, very simple. And I can just tighten this down. But like I said, it's not really that important at the minute because we still have to put the top on. But it just gives us that much of a step further to being ready for it. And if you do it now, all we have to do when we put the head on is line all is line the bottom mark up well line line all the marks up we shouldn't really have to be messing around with the distributor because this distributor is set might have to do a bit of fiddling with this once we actually turn the engine on just to make sure it's timed 100 percent but we should be we should be fairly close with that um, we can't be that far off. We're going to be close. I'll double check, nothing's moving, it hasn't, which is good. I'll tighten the two bolts for that, there's no point me sharing them on camera. And what we might as well do now is replace everything. 
So, so this oak tree arm is broke anyway, and this is the the new one. So we're going to put the new one in. And now we can put the cap on. Now, the cap should only fit one way. Now, it's kind of obvious, depending on your engine. For example, the cap won't fit that way because the leads will be going the wrong way. And it doesn't fit anyway. It actually slots into a little place when you get it right. So you can't really go wrong. And then it just very simply clips in. And there we go. That's our wiring for our electronic ignition, but that's on the car or the van, should I say, so we don't have to worry about that. And that's it. That's it in. Look, look, look what I got. Oh yeah. Now, basically, this was an expense I wasn't really planning on. We can see we have the old flywheel here which is really really heavy which didn't particularly bother me but I don't know if you can see the weld and when you turn it around on the back it's been absolutely hammered so it's all flat and the problem with this is this is now going to be out of balance if this is out of balance when you put it on here it's going to vibrate and it's going to vibrate all the way through all the big ends and the main bearings and it literally could just rip the engine apart, all because this is unbalanced. Now, can't seem to get these new anymore, but you can get them second hand. But the problem with them second hand is they're going to be mostly the same. And they're not even cheap second hand. So rather than me going down that route, I went with the WRC billet route. So this is so light, it's not even funny. Um, I'm not bothered about the lightness. Now again, if you was rallying it or something like that, lightness is key, but I'm not worried about that. But this is brand new, it's going to be properly balanced, and it is just so light. I mean, I can lift it with my little finger. Um, and the other good thing about it, it has the trigging wheel. Now you can actually take that trigging wheel off and you can put a different number of tooth on, depending on what ECU you're running and what actually setup you're running. So you can take this trigger, which is, this is the four point trigger, and you can put different trigger wheels on depending on your setup. So it's really, really handy for that too. The only other thing I've done is I've painted up and I've put on the power steering pump on this side, and that really is it. I also have to give a big, big shout out to uh, Motorsport Development. That's where I actually got this pulley off. So big, big thank you to them. I've also got a surprise as well. I've put that on Facebook, and that's gonna be when the engine's actually installed. So yeah, that's it. I can't put this on proper yet because I still need to put the timing belt on and the timing belt needs to go on first. The only other thing I did, I just cut the little notch out of there if you can see that for the timing, uh, which was in the other one. And that really is essentially it. So all I'm gonna do, this is gonna be the last piece I'm gonna stick on for this video. So just line that up. I'm not gonna put it all the way in yet. Get the new bolt. And just hold that in place. I have new fan belts as well, obviously, so I, I can put them on. But again, I can't put that on properly until I get the head on, until I put the timing belt on properly, then I can actually secure this. So that is it. This, this video might be a little bit boring because it's really only putting on all the auxiliary things. It's nothing really exciting. But the next one is going to be the actual uh, head gasket, and I'm going to obviously film that in 4K. I have to keep continuing filming with the old camera because I filmed all these bits a long time ago. So just to make it the same. And yeah, look, it's really, really close now. And I can't wait. Get the new head gasket, put it on and we'll have an engine. So look, yeah, that's it. And please, please, please keep helping with the GoFundMe. And big thank you to everybody that's already helped me with the GoFundMe to get this baby anti-lagged. And that's it really, so look, thumbs up, subscribe and all that, don't forget, check out our website, our forum if you haven't already signed up, please do, but most importantly, get your hands.